Okay, uh, thank you, Pawayan. So welcome back again, everyone. So this is the second uh, day of our symposium, so on language, uh, health, and well-being. So in this uh, in this afternoon session or morning in Indonesia, uh, afternoon in, in in Australia. So we will have two excellent speakers from uh, Indonesia. So the first one is Nurencia Yanuar and uh, Nelly Martin from uh, Malang, which is East uh, Java. So uh, they will be talking about investigating uh, COVID-19 awareness in Indonesia through uh, sign, public signs. And the second uh, speakers uh, will be from Bali, Wayan Mulyawan and Ketut Artawa. So they will be talking about new normal uh, representation in tourism industry. So it's a case study of multimodal linguistic landscape. So just uh, to remind uh, all of us, so in line with a good practice uh, for Zoom, so I would like to uh, kindly ask uh, all of the participants to mute uh, yourself during the presentation. And also later on, if you have a question, so you can uh, type the question in the Q&A uh, box, or you can raise your hand and ask the question directly to the presenter. And uh, also for the presenter, I would like to remind uh, all of you that we have 20 minutes for the uh, presentation and then we'll be followed uh, with question and answer for uh, 10 minutes. So uh, without further ado, I would like to hand it over to Nurencia to present uh, the paper. Over to you. Thank you very much. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. This um, morning or this afternoon, I am going to present our investigation on COVID-19 awareness in Indonesia through public science. These are what we're going to cover in the presentation. And um, to start the discussion, I would like to share a story about um, the difference between COVID-19 globally and COVID-19 in Indonesia. So the fear and terror of COVID-19 in Indonesia began later than the rest of the world. This is what happened globally. So um, starting in December 2019 and then January, and then by mid-January, there was already first recorded case outside of China. And, whoops. By the end of uh, January, the situation at China is already deemed a uh, very high risk by the WHO. But uh, what about in Indonesia? By mid-January, people knew about the virus from international news, but uh, they were unaware that the virus would affect their country as well. National news at that time was mainly covering the big flooding in Jakarta. Videos of people dancing in the middle of the flood were viral in social media, tagged with captions describing how these people were immune to COVID-19 because they are used to living in the slum of Jakarta. And uh, in the following month, many people were scared of COVID-19 already. The number of international tourists uh, plummeted, but life was still normal. And around uh, mid, February, the Indonesian government even um, announced their international tourism policy that they had extra funding to invite more international visitors. But um, in the beginning of March, the president announced the first COVID-19 case and then the situation started to change. Many schools and also uh, universities asked their students to study from home and they urged um, office workers to work from home. But um, only by the end of March, the government uh, regulated a large scale social restrictions, so much later than the world. And our research is conducted in two folds. So first is to explore the types of public science related to COVID-19 in Indonesia and investigate Indonesians' awareness of COVID-19. This is the research setting. So it's in my hometown, the second biggest city in Indonesia and home to four state universities. So there are so many young people in this city. And 
And uh, this is the ethnographic context of the research. Uh, people of Malang speak these languages, Indonesian, Javanese, Madurese, Walian, and also English. Walian is a youth language variety derived from Javanese and Indonesian. And this is how the languages uh, positioned. Um, the first is Indonesian. It's the national language. It's used in a formal situation and it's, it's everywhere. And Javanese is a local language. Madurese is also a local language and used by a minority of Madurese community. And Walian, as I said, is a youth language and English still considered a foreign language, despite the fact that it is learned uh, since primary school. And our research was conducted within the span of uh, around nine months. So from April to November 2020, we uh, took pictures of public signs around the city. And in October, we conducted short interviews on the spot with passerbys, and they are uh, randomly selected. And in November, we had um, focus group discussions with university students. Um, I am now based in Malang, and then the other researcher, Nelly Martin, she is based in uh, New Zealand, and we. Um, notice the striking difference between uh, what happened in Indonesia and what happened in New Zealand during the pandemic. So that's why we are conducting this um, research. And this is how we selected the interviewees. They were selected randomly and those passerbys happened to be present in the place where I was taking pictures. And the university students were invited to Google uh, form and um, the researcher or I did not know personally those interviewees except for one person um, who happened to be a passerby. And um, the interview was conducted mainly in Indonesian with some Japanese and also English. And then the uh, transcript was transcribed into English. All right, so now um, this is the findings of our research. We uh, found out that the signs can be classified into four creators or um, endorsers. Yeah, so the first one is government, which includes municipality, police department, and also mass organizations, and people itself, so the residents and business owners, because the signs are related to their restaurants, malls, shops, and also commercial advertisements. And we also have signs uh, endorsed by other institutions, such as schools, universities, and hospitals. Okay, so this is the example of a sign put up by the government. So on 14 April 2020, um, the text is here. Let us unite together with the government, fight COVID-19. And we have a picture of the mayor and vice mayor of Malang. This is common um, to have the picture of the uh, people in charge. And then um, this is from the police department. For now, please do not visit your hometown, guys. And this time is in Walian. Uh, this um, sign encourages people not to visit their hometown because uh, when the first news um, were delivered, people were afraid and they wanted to escape the city. And um, this is an example of signs in the residential area put up by the people. So they encourage physical distancing and they uh, are very afraid of a criminal search. Okay, so uh, everywhere you start to see many signs being put up. And on the 29th of uh, May, um, in this area, it was declared uh, to be an area where people have to wear masks. And then the sign was given in Indonesian. And this is interesting because in front of 
uh, this store in one of the biggest mall in the city, English uh, was used. So um, the sign was given in full English. We've adopted new in-store procedures uh, and so on. Okay, so everything here is written in English. And um, this one as well from a restaurant. So it describes the health protocols, washing hands, wearing mask, mask and also checking the um, temperature. And here is a sign put up in front of school and they did not use uh, text. Well, they did use text, but the text uh, were not that uh, many. Um, what is uh, appearing more is the pictures, yeah? So symptoms and also steps to prevent COVID-19. And also this one is a, a, a post yeah, in front of the university. People were stopped before entering the university. So it's interesting that the university is not on lockdown yeah, um, because we still have to go um, to finish our job. But then um, what they did is asking people to be checked their body temperature. So these are the um, conquering themes in the science. So actually the science are already promoting awareness and they stressed on new normal protocols. Okay, so physical distancing and also checking body temperature, wearing a mask and um, staying where you are, do not go anywhere, wash your hands and also doing self-isolation. So this is what is called as the new normal by uh, the Indonesians. So life should go on as normal, only that you have to pay attention to these health protocols. So that's actually what's happening in Indonesia. And by looking at the signs, you can see some related health and social issues that happened uh, during the pandemic. Some groups of people prohibited uh, the burial of um, COVID-19 positive victims in their uh, area. So this is the sign, Jenazah COVID-19 or the corpse of COVID-19. Yeah, okay, so it's like really written on the side of the street, encouraging people to um, be more acceptable and to uh, not be afraid of letting COVID-19 victims being buried in their residential, uh, in uh, their area. And uh, this one was uh, discussed before. So um, people were really afraid of criminal rates and um, there was no economic assurance from the government. So it was quite um, scary at that time. And um, people were upset because they were not allowed to perform public religious activities. So this was a um, discussion and the government was accused of being a communist because they prohibited people from going to um, mosques or churches to perform religious activities. And uh, this is a uh, message from a church and this one is a message from Islamic um, tour and travel. Now, what about people's awareness? Um, this is what we gather from the interviews and also focus group discussions. On COVID-19 itself, most interviewees were aware of COVID-19, so they knew what COVID-19 is and they uh, are aware of everything related to COVID-19. Only one interviewee did not know COVID-19. Uh, he was a parking man uh, that happened to be on the site when I was taking a picture and he only knew that there was a disease, but he did not know exactly what um, COVID-19 is. And they were able to explain the symptoms. Um, even the person who did not know COVID-19, they were able to explain the symptoms. So that was a little bit um, striking. And these people did not question the legitimacy of the disease. So they uh, really believe that COVID-19 exists. And uh, related to the health protocols, they understood the protocols, what they need to do to prevent the disease. And they reported to have performed all the steps uh, in the health protocols. So they really washed their hands and they wear a mask. 
Uh, some of them claim that they have been more relaxed since the government introduced the term new normal. So they say um, that this is already a new normal, so everything should go back to normal. So they underlined the term normal. Yeah. And uh, the interviews believe that uh, health protocols will protect them. So they believe in what is being uh, transferred in the public sign. And about the public science itself, they understood the messages written in Indonesian, or well, they have difficulties understanding the English signs. Um, they rarely paid attention to posters and banners on the side of the street because of the situation uh, in Indonesian traffic. Um, there was not a lot of uh, space for people to walk. So people usually either drive a motorcycle or um, a car when they go to the street. So they cannot really pay attention to those uh, signs by the side of the street. And they wanted the government to reach them directly instead of just putting signs. All right, so this is the conclusion of our study so far. Public space has become a place to promote uh, health awareness related to COVID-19 through linguistic signs. And most of them are given in Indonesian, the national language, because um, I did not mention the number previously, but most of the signs were put up by government institutions. So it's um, to be expected that the language being used is uh, Indonesian. And people claim that they rarely paid attention to COVID-19 related si uh, signs on the side of the street, but they are somehow aware of COVID-19 and know what to do to protect themselves. And uh, the last note, investigating, COVID-19 public signs in Indonesia can reveal the social and health issues the country faced during the pandemic. All right, so that's all from me. Thank you very much. Please let me know if you have some questions or you have some suggestions to improve uh, this research. Well, thank you very much, uh, Renzi. So uh, thank you for being on time as well. So we have more time for uh, question and answer. So I would like to invite all the participants. So if you have any questions, please go ahead. So yeah, yeah, silakan Pak Wayan. Okay, thank you. Uh, for the presenters, uh, uh, Ms. Lorencia, I would like to ask you something because you have uh, maybe a bit similar with my analysis. Uh, I wonder if uh, the posters or the the signs that you found in uh, Malang uh, uh, are they represent a new normal start from the April or by the end of or nearly on the October or November? Did you find the new protocol or new life representations at the beginning start from the April? or the Aprils, you only find the awareness of the COVID-19 uh, outbreak. And then after that, maybe on June, based on the uh, Department of Health uh, regulations, then you find another signs of a new protocol, something like that. Is there any differentiation between months to months of the data collection? Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for the question, Pak Wayan. So in the beginning of the uh, data collection, that was probably in March. Well, in March, I found only some um, signs because I was also afraid to go out of the house. So I was like rarely going out. I, I really um, um, restricted myself from going outside. And more signs were collected uh, by the month of April. And, um, at that time, the signs were focusing on two things only. So not the complete health protocols, but um, wearing mask and uh, physical distancing. So those two uh, themes were found uh, in many parts of the city. And then um, the points about washing hands, checking body temperature, arrived later about uh, May. So when they had more time to create more public signs and uh, a more complete one and, and putting it up uh, around the city. So um, 
there is a slight change, I guess. And then if I have to look at my notes as well, around April, um, there was this trend to put up um, things in front of uh, the house. So the, uh, the number of people who are like selling the things for people to wash their hands before entering the house and also for their guests as well, um, they were uh, on search. So um, yeah, I, I think I uh, have to say that there are some differences in the way people uh, focus on in the public science month to month. I, uh, I think you should add that in your analysis later on in your data presentation so that we have a clear positioning that there are states of awareness signs in Indonesia in accordance to the regulation made by the government. That is my suggestion. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for the suggestion. I will do that. Yeah. Yep. Um, anyone else? Yes, please. Okay, uh, go for it, uh, Ade. Thank you very much for the uh, opportunity and also thank you very much for the uh, very great presentation. I was very much enjoying it. And I think I'm, I also want to continue on the previous question uh, regarding of the evolution of the content of uh, public science. I wonder if uh, you also consider analyzing whether or not the evolution of the content of public science is uh, almost like a real-time parallel with the evolution of uh, evidence in um, medicine in terms of either public health or uh, medical findings with regards to COVID uh, pre prevention and uh, treatment. Uh, because we know that there were a time that, you know, there was a vague uh, information about uh, evidence of the use of masks and, and uh, so on and so forth. So I wonder, uh, what do you think about that? So if, if Indonesia is lagging behind the evidence that is you know, available out there. Thank you. So you would like to know if I will consider the parallel of the realities uh, happening in the society uh, with the time when I found those uh, public signs? Uh, no, uh, rather more to the uh, evolution of the scientific findings, almost like evidence, scientific evidence is uh, was uh, evolving at the time also. And the content of the public science evolving at the time also. Is there any parallel or Indonesia is lagging behind from identifying what evidence is relevant for the public science? Um, I think Indonesia is lagging behind yeah so i know that now there are so many um new information about the disease but um now i mean uh, from my data in november the type of uh the information being put up in the science were still somehow similar so uh, they haven't really updated the new information about the vaccine for example so um, they still have this sign on the side of the street. Uh, discipline, discipline is the best vaccine. So they um, still stressed on the um, information about the health protocols, but they did not really update the, uh, um, the information about a new vaccine that is actually coming up. Perhaps that's answer your question. So I haven't really uh, looked at the uh, scientific evidence. So uh, my research now is still focusing on um, gathering data and also analyzing the data from the public science itself. But yeah, I think we have to also add some more um, information from the scientific, scientific evidence. Yes, that answers my question. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Asti. So, uh, Nara, do you want to ask questions? Uh, yes, if no one is, uh, is uh, putting hands up. So it was very interesting to hear that. Uh, by the way, it was a great presentation. Um, very interesting to, to hear that, uh, you know, uh, the kind of, uh, you know, immunity to the pandemic is because in Jakarta, people used to live in a slum. So that is very interesting kind of idea. Uh, if I have a uh, 
uh, correctly understood. Uh, so uh, I was thinking of, uh, you know, the Mongols uh, saying that because they eat uh, uh, lamb, so that's why they are immune to the pandemic, yeah, the kind of thing, the food and, uh, you know, the uh, germs and, and religion and this all part of this kind of immune, uh, related to the immune system. But my question is actually, um, you know, you, you mentioned at the beginning that they are different in different languages. Is there any um, uh, differences in the in the different language? Uh, you know, the message. I mean, what I mean is, is that all conveying uh, uh, very much the same message, or uh, you know, in one language has got uh, you know different connotation than the other kind of thing? Yeah. So there is some uh, difference actually. So. Um, when they use Indonesian, they are being very formal. So they are um, imposing a certain kind of message to the people. Uh, and usually government institutions uh, do this. But interestingly, one uh, government institution that is police, the police department used the slang or the uh, youth language, Walian. So they use Japanese and also um, the reversed word. Uh, the reverse word that was being used is care, and care is a reversal uh, from re. So re is a way we address people that we know well in East uh, Japanese. So they use this one, and uh, it was used to um, convey a different strategy, I guess, to become more friendly and to appear nicer to the people. Um, because the text that was used was only one line. So compared to the text that was uh, in Indonesian, uh, sometimes they appear in paragraphs, even though it's a banner on the side of the street. So lots of texts. But then uh, when they use this uh, Walian and also Javanese, they only uh, have one line. And yeah, I, I found two signs that were like this. So perhaps this indicates the different strategies that they uh, somehow use when they use different languages in the science. Okay, thank you. Yep, so just really quick, uh, Renzi. So we have uh, two, a uh, couple of questions in the chat box. So probably I will pick just uh, two of those. So the first one is uh, from Wilda. So can you explain more on how did you decide which signs you would pay attention to and which one you did not. And also a really uh, critical question from Marta. So has there been public resistance to government's position on mask wearing and social distancing? So can you just elaborate uh, really quick? Yeah, we have two more, two more minutes. Uh, so I would like to try to answer first question first from Wilda. Uh, about the method, I, I guess, uh, how I decided which signs I will pay attention to. Um, in the beginning, I did not have any strategy. So I was just taking pictures of any signs that I uh, could find and I could take pictures because um, the situation in Indonesian traffic, in Malang especially, there was not um, like um, enough places to actually stop and take proper pictures. So I took pictures whenever I, I could. So um, that's why I used the word uh, randomly selected. And uh, I also, up to now, I also uh, took pictures where I, uh, whenever I went. So um, this is, I guess, is also uh, under, uh, it's like the data is capturing my movement during the pandemic. So I did not really plan that I will go here and take pictures, rather I go somewhere based on my normal activities. And if I see signs that, uh, are, uh, that are in a position where I'm able to take pictures, then I will do that. So that's uh, my method. Do you, do you have some suggestions or maybe, uh, more criticism to this um, method. Well, yeah, so I am just um, going with the flow in this case. And the second question from Marta, has there been public resistance to government's position, position on mask wearing and social distancing? Um, 
I could not really recall a big public resistance in the city, at least. So they uh, obey the regulation. But I remember older people like my father and also my neighbors who were older, they uh, really had difficulties in um, following the mask wearing regulations and also the not going to um, public religious uh, activities. So they really had hard time on this. Yeah, so I guess that's also answering the social distancing thing. Yeah, so it's, it's fine for them not to go to the office, but it's really difficult for them to not go to the mosque because this is something religious and they uh, are afraid of um, the repercussions from God that they will, ref uh, that they will uh, receive. So, yeah. All right, uh, thank you, Renzi. So it is really interesting research. So unfortunately we have limited time, so we need to stop there. So if you have further question, just directly send your question to Renzi and discuss uh, that with uh, Renzi. So thank you very much. Um, I would like to invite uh, the second uh, speakers, uh, Wayan Mulyawan, uh, to uh, present the paper. Over to you, Pak Wayan. Uh, to 